Hey there guys, Matt Guzman here, back with another video, and today's going to be about how to get the Environmental Science Merit Badge. So, number one, says to make a timeline of the history of environmental science in America. So, that's like through the 1500s, 1600s, and so on, up to the 2000s. And you're supposed to identify contributions made by Boy Scouts to environmental science, and you're supposed to include dates, names, organizations, and important events. So, let me give you some examples of what, what it means by that, so... So, let's take the 1600s. So, for example, I got that the Plymouth Colony passed a law restricting the cutting and selling of timber. So, it's just anything in part of those eras that has something to do with environmental science. So, for the 1800s, I got that on March 1st, 1872, President Ulysses S. Grant signed the Yellowstone National Park Protection Act into law. So, it, this didn't mean that it was a national park just then, it just meant that it was protected under the law of the act. So, in the 1900s, I got that people were plowing everything, so there was no plants, roots, or bushes to hold the dirt together. And it meant that farmers were over plowing huge segments of land. So, when storms would come through, all of the loose dirt was caught in high winds and caused what is known as the Dust Bowl. And... It's just a description of that where you write something that's related to, in that time period of the century that's related to environmental science. All right, number two says to define the following terms. First is population, community, ecosystem, biosphere, symbiosis, niche, habitat, conservation, threatened species, endangered species, extinction, pollution, prevention, brownfield, ozone, watershed, airshed, non-point source, hybrid vehicle, and fuel cell. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's a lot. Alright, so number three says to do one activity from each of the following. A is ecology, B is air pollution, C is water pollution, D is land pollution, E is endangered species, F is pollution prevention, resource recovery, and conservation, and G is pollination. Now, it says number three but really each of these is its own requirement so it's really just like seven different requirements so it's gonna take it took me a long time to get number three so first of all for ecology it says um choose one in each category and in each category there's three choices so i chose number three so it's requirement three letter a but the third choice. So it says, discuss what an ecosystem is and tell how it is maintained in nature and how it survives. B says about air pollution is, I chose the third choice as well. It says, explain what is acid rain. In your explanation, tell how it affects plants and the environment and the steps society can take to help reduce its effects. C is water pollution. It, uh, I chose number two which is conduct an experiment and identify methods used to mediate, reduce, effects of oil spills on waterfowl, and discuss results with your counselor. D says about land pollution, and I chose the third option as well. It says photograph an area affected by erosion, and then you share the photograph with counselor, discuss why the area has eroded, and discuss what could alleviate the erosion. E is about the endangered species part, and I chose number one because you do research on an endangered species in your state, and you're supposed to discuss what is its natural habitat and why it's endangered, what is being done to preserve it, and how many are left in the wild, and you're supposed to prepare a 100-word report including a drawing. F is about pollution prevention, resource recovery, and conservation. And I chose the second option, which is determine 10 ways to conserve resources or efficiently use resources in your home, at school, or at camp. And you're supposed to practice two methods for seven days and discuss with your counselor what you have learned from it. Uh, G is about pollination. And this is actually a pretty big one, and it's all about bees. So, 3G, number one. This is probably the simplest one, even though it's really long. It says, using photographs or illustrations, point out differences between drone and a worker bee. And then you're supposed to discuss stages of bee development, like the eggs, larvae, and pupa. Explain pollination process, propolis, and how it's used by bees. And then you tell how bees make honey and beeswax, how both are harvested, 
and explain the role in the hive by the queen bee, drone bees, and worker bees. Finally, on to number four, it says choose two different outdoor studies areas, like a hilltop versus a bottom hilltop, or at the bottom of the hill, a field versus a forest, and a swamp versus a dry land. And for both study areas, do one of the following. And the simplest I found was 4A, and that says mark off a plot of four square yards in each study area and count the number of species found. You estimate how much space is occupied by each plant species and the type and or number of non-plant species. And then you write a report discussing biodiversity and population density and discuss the report with the counselor. So I'm about to show an example of how you would do that. Now, they're not exactly contrasting areas, they're both in the same area, but it's just to show how you're supposed to be able to do this. Alright, so this requirement says to take a plot of land and observe the plant species and non-plant species of that area. So, taking this plot of land, for instance, let's look a little bit closer. You can see we have some uh, clovers here, and also some of these, uh, I'm not sure what they are, but they're kind of like clovers, but they're not the same thing. So we got some clovers, and... Obviously, there's some wood chips here as well. Going up the pot, you can see some ferns. So we got wood chips, ferns. Looks like we got some little bit of grass growing there as well. And then also, there is a tree here. So, determining the how much of it there are, you can say about like, let's see, about five to ten percent of it are clovers. Let's see, like one percent of it is the grass over there. Uh, about a good 70 to 80 percent is like the wood chips. There's some uh, the fern, probably about 10 percent, and the tree, for about 10 percent too. So it's all about like population density and biodiversity. So this is a pretty biodiverse area because it has uh, different kinds of plant species. So we got the clovers, the grass, the ferns, and the tree. So let's look at another plot of land and uh, compare the two. So let's take this plot of land. So it looks like we got some leaves here because of the tree. We got some of these little plants here as well. They're, I'm not sure what they're called, but they're like spiky on the edges and they have like a, yeah, the leaves are spiky. And we also got a uh, palmetto over here as well. So we got a palmetto, got a tree, got those spiky things. And we also have this type of plant here. I think this might be a part of like an oak of some kind. I'm not very sure. So. This has less biodiversity because there's less types of plants, but it also takes up a bigger amount of space because of how big the tree is. So the tree is bigger, so that's probably why there isn't that many types of species here. Um, I don't think I've seen any non-species yet. I guess we could have found some ants somewhere, but I don't see any bugs at the moment. And usually there's lizards somewhere around here, but it's been raining, so at the moment there aren't any lizards. But I mean, it's good for the grass and stuff. Also, I just noticed this as well. There's also some moss. So that's pretty cool too. There's moss on there. And we got some lichen as well. So there's lichen and there's moss. So, yeah. And then you record your observations and write a detailed report to your counselor. Alright, on to number five. Five says, using a provided construction project, or one that you have made yourself, Identify items needed for an environmental impact statement, or an EIS, for a project that you've planned. And finally, number six, it says find out about three career opportunities in environmental science. And then you pick one and find out the education, training, and experience required. So the one I chose was a park ranger because you see park rangers everywhere. So it must seem like a good topic to, to be curious about and look it up. And then once you have all that done, you discuss with your counselor and explain why it interests you. Alright, thank you for watching my video on how to get the Environmental Science Merit Badge. If you enjoyed this, please look out for any other videos I have in the future. And if you really benefit benefited from this, please share it with any other friends that you have. Or, And if you really benefited from this, please share it with any friends that you have. Or if you haven't seen any of my other Merit Badge videos, please check those out as well. This is Matt Guzman, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye!